Here we go, Mel Gibson. <laughs> This is a GMA uh, preview. Good morning, America. Got the exclusive interview with Mel Gibson. We we thought we would have it, but uh, yeah, we were supposed. I to. guess we came in second place. Where is it? <laughs> Play it quickly. What did you think it was? Me? It was just the stupid ramblings of a drunkard, <laughs> and um, and what I need to do to heal myself oh. and to be assuring and allay the fears of others and to heal them if they had any heart wounds uh, from something on the so this is the last thing i want to be is that kind of monster this is as far as like waking Healing? up in the morning going did i say that this what is did i do the biggest what did i say uh there's just no comeback no no I, I, just I go full bore the other way you know when they were yeah saying, any, the jews any press is uh you know good press not this, this, is this like, one this is like the most difficult. You can get busted with the sex tape. You can get called yep. the hooker. You can you, you can beat your wife, and you can somehow come back, mm -hmm. you know, and do a remake of the Shaggy DA. <laughs> and you, you can get back in there, right? Doesn't matter. But this guy, man, done. I, I, I'm going to spin this though. I'm going to tell Mel that I was hurt and I needed to be healed with a movie role. <laughs> Good luck. Good luck to you. Oh, you you're not Jewish, though. Yes, so. Lethal Weapon Five. It's him in a yarmulke. I don't know what that means. <laughs> He's trying to. He's gonna have to save somebody Jewish in the, like in every movie. Yeah. You have to save Israel from a bombing. Come Mel with me, Mr. Bernstein. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I am just sitting. I'm essential to the. Get get on my back. I'll carry you. <laughs> Let's say hi to uh, Nate in Queens. He's Nate. not heavy. He runs Hollywood. <laughs> Nate. Hey guys, how's up? Hey. What happens? Hey, uh, we have time to play a little Mel Gibson audio before we get I out of here? So. Please. Watch him groveling in front oh. of that stupid Diane Sawyer with a different camera lens. Oh, that apologizing idiot. They have Diane Sawyer's different camera lens. It's awful. It's like watching two movies spliced together. <laughs> You're old. Accept it. You're not a young woman. You're not sexy. You're an old bag of meat. Every year, the Vaseline gets thicker oh. and thicker on that lens. It's like Please. watching someone through a dream segment. <laughs> it was... <laughs> <laughs> That's really good, Jim. Cuba, right? I just hate her. Yes, Guantanamo yeah. Bay. Gitmo. Yeah. Uh, that's one gig you really can't promote. You can't handle the truth. You really can't promote <laughs> I'll that get gig. them all laughing with that monologue. <laughs> uh, Mel was drinking tequila but doesn't know how much. A few drinks later and I was in the back of a police car wailing, so... A few drinks later, do you know how many? No, I don't. But I know it was tequila. <laughs> Everything was How fuzzy, you like your face again? in that monitor. A couple of months. Years go by, you're fine. And then all of a sudden, in a heartbeat, in an instant, on an impulse, somebody shoves a glass of mezcal in front of your nose and says, it's from Oaxaca. And you go, Wah! And it's burning its way through your esophagus, and you go, oh, man, what did I do that for? Can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. Were you drinking from the open bottle of tequila in the car? Don't to step on it and let all the toothpaste yeah. out. Absolutely. And then, and then rub it all over juice. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can finish brushing your teeth. No need to go over to Mr. Saperstein's house and rub toothpaste in his eyes and burn him. <laughs> juice paste. <laughs> <laughs> this guy is capable of killing someone. Yeah, he's, he's uh, you can hear it in his certifiably voice. insane, I believe. Uh, Mel doesn't know what he'd say if the officer had been black. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> At least he's being honest. Oh, no. The police officer had been black. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. What would you have said? Who knows? I would have, I'd have to get loaded again and tell you, and then be in those conditions. Could again. you please? Because it's unpredictable what's going to come flying out. That would be a great new reality show. Get him loaded. And get him in a car. One week it's a black guy. Next week it's an Asian yeah. guy. Next week it's a you know a, a woman, a gay guy. Yeah, just go through the circuit. Where are we going tonight, Officer? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> it's your <laughs> kind that screws everything up for us normal white people. <laughs> you. <laughs> the dual beep. I, for Mel. I, I, I hated lethal weapons. They team me up with a. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know what he would have said. Here he talks about his anger. I've heard people say, you know, I am a. People are saying. Angry drunk. Oh. Fill in the blank. <laughs> I am a. 
crappy drunk until I snap for no reason and just turn. Where does this anger come from? I have no idea. <laughs> just I've been angry all my life. Um, uh, and I try not to have it manifest itself, you know. You, you try and keep a lock on it. And it really isn't. It's real back there someplace. And, uh, Listen how calm he is. I've talked to people about that. Exactly. Yeah. Where is it coming from? I can get really mad about... I can murder inanimate objects. Oh. Like... I see choking the toaster in the morning. <laughs> yeah. You know. So trying I'm, to be charming. I'm working process yeah. right now. Shut so. up, Mel. Just There's accept what you no, did. Uh... Stop trying to charge. You can murder the toaster. Ha <laughs> ha! Me too! Ha uh -huh. ha! <laughs> Shut your face. And stop groveling before this... This cryptic... <laughs> cryptic woman, this cadaver with a new show. Whatever she is. She, whatever she is. She doesn't even have a gender anymore. She's so ancient. She's just one <laughs> big glop of meat. Her whole body, from the neck to the ankles, is just sexless meat. <laughs> Speaking of old news broads, I saw yeah. Leslie Stahl yesterday. Yeah. Wow. Bad? Wow. TV could cover up a world of hurt. Oh, you saw it live out there in the street? Wow. Walking corpse. We saw Sting yesterday walking home. He opened up's brother, saw Sting and his wife. And well, Did you yeah. say hi? Hey, I saw you the other day. No, uh, went blah, blah, blah. Nah, I went, hey, Sting, and he went, hey. Yeah, yeah. Hey. He said hello. We kept walking, and I go, remember we all talked about it? Yeah. Well, now we got two more clips, but we got to go now. So oh, gonna, but I want to hear but Mel. I want to hear all Mel, right. Opie. How about on XM? Yeah, he's we'll, all, he's all um, we'll con quiet. We'll now. continue on XM with the Mel clips. That's right. And we have two more hours of funny show to do. That's right. right. Uh, once again, no fatty. All right, Mel Gibson. So more GMA audio from that uh, wonderful, wonderful journalist, uh, Diane Sawyer. Diane Sawyer, so you can barely tell who she is. There's a difference between saying that place is a tinderbox mm -hmm. and the constellation of things happening there could take us all down and yeah. saying the Jews are responsible for all the wars. No. Like isolate her saying that. <laughs> yeah, let's get Just her in trouble. Just isolate her saying we that. We got a clip of Diane Sawyer that we'll you're not going to believe. Yeah. Diane Sawyer admits. Why don't we start our own gossip show? We yeah. should. With just out of context lies. Well, I, think lies, lies I thought we already had one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dan, can you develop that? Yes. <laughs> No, I'm not even kidding. I think we could have fun with that. Yeah, get people saying stuff out of context. It's and, usually great when they're quoting other people. Yeah, we're going to make our own gossip show. And then we're gonna, us. Here's an exclusive. Listen what Diane Sawyer had to say. The Jews are responsible. Well? Uh-oh. Strictly speaking, that's, that's not true because it takes two to tango. What are the Jews responsible for? Uh -oh. What are they responsible for? I think that they're not blameless in the conflict. There's been aggression and retaliation and aggression. It's just part of being in conflict and being at war. So they're not blameless. Of course they're not. Of course they're not. He was talking about World War Two. <laughs> the ghettos were supposed to be kept neat, and they left things. <laughs> you know, they made it messy. Can we get Bob Kelly on the phone? He's in, he's stuck in Buffalo. Let's try to get him. He was talking. Dude, uh, dude, you know the snow. I told him, dude. And I was I was the guy in Pal Talk with the Glock on cam. Could you please unban me from the room in Pal Talk? The name is Old Jim Stalker. If he asks. If you ask the screeners, I call every day. All right. Little oh. Jim Stalker. Oh, he's a sweet boy. And finally, one last clip. Mel Gibson on Good Morning America. In an earlier apology, he had asked the Jewish community for dialogue and help. But I heard back that a woman who had read the apology actually wept with relief. Uh, now, why? that sort of hit me. I was like, relief? Oh, my God, she was afraid. She was terrified. And, wow, you know. I, I, I don't think I <clears throat> realized until, like, a couple of four days later, You're 50. five days later, that <laughs> what I did was press a big fear button. You didn't realize that? I didn't realize oh, the level of fear. Shut your mouth, that both of you! Did. What did you think it was? Me? It was just the stupid ramblings of a drunkard. You know? and, Play, and I guess I had banter. to sort of think, well, hang on, it's conceivable that they think I could be the next uh, goose-stepping maniac to come into their neighborhood, you know? You could walk know. normal. Yeah. You don't have to goose-step. No one's afraid of you, Mel. 
You didn't tap into fear. The woman who wept with relief is a melodramatic horse's ass who's, like, in love with you. They love, oh, Mel, now I'm not going to be able to watch this movie. She wept with her relief. Thank God I still have a shot. Maybe I'll come over. <laughs> no, he won't, you fat Long Island housefrau. <laughs> Maybe Mel will love me. Now we could watch his movies again. Can you? And enjoy them. Let's get a Ryan. He's a white angel. He Ryan just in, still uh, comes off as quite an anti-Semite. He is. Yeah. He doesn't like Jews, so what? I mean, that's not much the right way to be, but it, it, it's not, it's a, it is your right to not like people as long as you're not infringing on their rights. His you know, father, I'm a lawyer. I guess. What was it? His father didn't like him either? Oh, well, denied the Holocaust. That's a little more than didn't like him. <laughs> yeah. They were murdered and he thought it was like, didn't happen. All right, so he had a little problem. <laughs> yeah. Let's go to Ryan. Yes. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's unbelievable. That goes beyond just a slight, uh, you know, twinge. That's annoyment. pretty much the home run of anti-Semitism. Yeah. Holocaust never Holocaust. happened. They're all living somewhere. <laughs> really, Ryan and Jackson.